you're irresponsible. All week you've been looking for a job. You still haven't found one, and you go out and spend a fortune on new earrings. Oh, they were on sale, and besides, my morale needed a big boost. Which one do you like better? I like the drop. Don't you think they make my face look a little long? So wear one of each. <laughs> I'm not going to wear either pair. Hi, Donald. Hi. You got today's paper? Hi, Judy. Hi, Don. Yeah, it's on the coffee table. I'll get my coat. Okay. What do you want to see? Uh, hunger in the sky, the battle of the worm people, or the horrible Mr. Baby? I want to see a love story. Good. Then it's the battle of the worm people. <laughs> Are you and Leon going with us? No, he's delivering. Don't you know there's a population explosion? Yeah, I sure do. Today it hit my office. My secretary is going to have a baby. Oh, great. Yeah, great for her, but not for me. She quit. She's not going to have that kid for seven and a half months, and she quit today. Well, some women get queasy right from the beginning. They really can't work. Well, what's the big problem? You just hire another girl. Well, Ann, you get used to a secretary. I mean, she learns to understand your work habits. She learns to... Wait a minute. I got an idea. It's so simple. All you have to do is replace your secretary with another girl. I know that, Judy. But who? That girl. <laughs> Just one good reason why you shouldn't hire me. Well, uh, you have no experience as a secretary. Right. Give me one more. <laughs> and look, the job requires an expert typist. Oh, I got A's in high school typing. <laughs> Thank you. Look, Anne, you said you weren't going to pressure me, but that's what you're doing. Oh, sorry. I thought we were merely discussing it. Hey, hey, look, this looks good. A hot fudge banana split with cashew nuts. It's a great idea. Fine, I'll order two. No, I mean Judy's idea about hiring me. <laughs> and look, don't you ever give up. You're right. What am I making such a big fuss about? I mean, it's just a job. Just a way of earning money. To pay the rent and to buy food and clothing and medical supplies. <laughs> look, Ann, let me explain something to you. First of all, it is not my decision alone. Jerry Bauman and I share one secretary, so he has a voice in this, too. Oh, I'm sure Jerry wouldn't object to me. Yeah, probably not, because Jerry is not dating you. Oh, Donald, don't worry. In the office, our relationship will be purely business, and outside the office, purely personal. Anne, Anne, can I be perfectly frank with you without you getting mad? Of course. Okay. Well, I just don't think I'd like to have you working in the same office with me. Okay, forget it. I mean, you don't want me as your secretary, and that's final. That's your decision, and, and I accept it. Okay. Okay, can we order now? No, I'd like to go home. <laughs> what? Well, Donald, I've got a big day ahead of me tomorrow. Job hunting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Ann. Okay. If Jerry approves, you've got the job. Oh, Donald. Oh. So, when I got home, I realized it would be too much of an imposition. On who? Well, on you, of course. I mean, she's my girlfriend, and I certainly have no right to inflict her on you. So now look, Jerry, I want you to know, I understand. I don't. Well, you know what I mean. No. Well, I just don't think it's fair to mix you up in my personal life, right? What's that got to do with Anne's working here? It's perfectly all right with me. She can start tomorrow. I always thought we were friends. We are. Yeah, but when I really need you, where are you?
morning, Anne. Good morning. Welcome to our news factory. Thank you. Oh, I hope Donald didn't give you too much pressure about hiring me. Uh, too much? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it was too much. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good morning, Anne. Good morning. Mr. Bauman is in his office, and there are no messages. Very good. Oh, you know, I've never seen you this early in the morning. You look wonderful. Most girls, they look terrible first thing in the morning. Do they? Oh, well, well uh, I mean, that's only hearsay, of course. I, I don't know firsthand. I mean, I just hear them talking. And, <laughs> I mean, I just thought it was general knowledge. Anyway, you look gorgeous. Mr. Hollinger, that is a very personal comment. And as we agreed, during business hours, we should keep everything business-like. Uh, yes, yes, you're right. Oh, oh, I usually get here much earlier than this. My alarm clock didn't go off this morning. No, no, really. really I know that sounds silly, but that's really what happened. Ann, would you... Hi, Don. Isn't this a little early for you? <laughs> no. No, it's not. Ed, I'd like you to type this for me. An original and two carbons. No rush. Uh, all right. It's no good, Jerry. It's no good. Give her a chance. She's only been here five minutes. I knew it wouldn't work before she ever got here. I found myself apologizing to her for being late. That's not her fault. <laughs> Shh. Uh-oh. She lied to me. She can't even type. I told her it wasn't a rush. Hi. I'm just cleaning the keys. It'll make the copy a lot cleaner. Don, relax. Everything will be all right. Yeah, because she cleans the keys? What does that prove? Why did it have to happen this week? This week? Yeah, my Otto Bergman article. It's not going fast enough, and Hamlin's beginning to turn the heat on. <laughs> well, we don't have to worry about our typing. <laughs> That's about the best job of typing I've ever seen. Not a single mistake. Thank you, Mr. Bauman. We're not quite that formal around here. Nobody gets paid very much, and we all use first names. <laughs> I'll remember that. Oh, oh. Uh, excuse me. Oh, it's, it's okay. I, I was just thinking. Oh. Well, excuse me for disturbing your thinking. No, 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 I mean it. I, I really was thinking. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm sharper when I'm lying down. I, I don't know, maybe it's the blood rushing to your head, or, or uh, maybe it's... Uh... Oh, why don't we let some of this lovely sunshine in? <laughs> you know, you really shouldn't cut yourself off from that gorgeous view. Uh, what do you want? Oh, well, uh, I was just wondering if you wanted anything. Uh, no, no, nothing. Well, if you do, I'm right out there. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh, hello. This is for Mr. Hollinger. Oh, thank you. Sure, Melanie, honey. Love of my life. Listen, Melanie, you gorgeous thing. Why don't you leave that broken-down husband of yours and come away with me to Tahiti? And I'll send in a new voucher filled out properly. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Good Goodbye. Well, it's, it's one call after another. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's one of the girls in the accounting department. She okays a lot of the expense account stuff. Oh, I like her name. Melanie, honey. That's very nice. Look, Ann, guys talk like that on the phone all the time. I mean, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's a... Do you have something for me? Oh, yes. This just came. Thanks. Why don't we make this place cheery? <laughs> These are your 
reports, and I've typed out your expense account. Thanks, Ann. You get an A on your first day. Thank you. Good night, Ann. Good night. Oh, would you mind saying good night to Donald for me? His door is locked. Locked? Yes. Yeah, I'll say good night. Okay, thanks. Is she gone? Yeah, I just left. Boy, she put in a good day. Yeah, well, I didn't. I didn't write one usable word. What were you doing? <laughs> Mostly I was jumping up off the couch, feeling guilty, closing the drapes, explaining myself and apologizing. Jerry, I just feel strange with her around. Tomorrow, everything will fall into place. Go home, unwind, get a good night's sleep. I can't. Why? I've got a date with her tonight. <laughs> You want to call off your date with Don and get a good night's sleep. I can't. Why not? Because admitting I'm tired is like admitting working for him is a big strain and that he was right in the first place. But he was right, wasn't he? <laughs> so? So? So as long as I've got one drop of energy left, I won't admit it. <laughs> Somebody like him any day of my life. Mr. Hollinger's office. Yes. Well, no, he's not in yet. May I take a message? Yes. All right. Yes, I'll tell him. Thank you very much, Mr. Hamlin. Goodbye. Morning, Anne. Good morning. Happy second day. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, I hope I didn't keep you out too late last night. No, not at all. I had the feeling I was keeping you. Oh, no, no. Oh, there was a phone call for you. He said there's no rush, and if you weren't going to the baseball game this afternoon, to please give him a ring. The baseball game? Who was it? Um, uh, a Mr. Hamlin. A Mr. Hamlin? That, that's Hatchet Man Hamlin. He's the managing editor of this magazine. What did you tell him, man? Well, I just told him you weren't in yet. Well, why did you tell him that? Well, you weren't in yet. Well, well, look, now he knows I'm late. What happened? Hamlin is blowing his top. It must be because I haven't sent in that Otto Bergman article yet. Oh, it didn't sound like he was blowing his top. He was very soft-spoken. Yeah, well, yeah, well, his normal conversational tone is a scream. The matter he gets, the softer he spokes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaks. Speaks. <laughs> Hamlin, but boy, Hamlin's really on my back. Look, look at that. If you ever want to get that article finished, you better dictate it to Anne. Uh, okay, okay, now, take this. Um, Bergman is a director to who fame has never... Whom? What? That should be whom. A director to whom fame has never. Okay, okay, uh, whom? Uh, where was I? Fame has never... Fame has never what? I don't know. Well, didn't you get it? Well, you didn't say what fame has never. You just said fame has never. Uh, 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 fame, uh, fame has never uh, brought complacency. Uh, paragraph. Paragraph. Uh, <clears throat> there is no director whom it is believed. Well, that'd be who. All right. All right. Who? Uh, now, where was I? It is believed. Uh, draws so deeply from his personal life for the content of his films. Um, he, he is enormously respected even by those he has fought with. This is significant because... Uh, with is a preposition. I know that, so... Well, you really shouldn't end a sentence with a preposition. You've made up your mind to get me fired, right? Well, no, Donald. I just wouldn't want you... Every time my ideas start rolling out, you get them off the track. Leave my grammar alone. Who, whom, with... It's part of the job. It's one of the things you have to put up. It's one of the things up with which you have to put. Yes, sir. I'll remember that. Yeah, well, well type that out, and uh, I'll rough out the rest on the typewriter. Well, yes, sir. 
Uh, when you're finished typing what you're working on, continue with this. Is this the whole thing? The whole thing. Type it all up clean and pretty. <laughs> right. Who do I give it to? Whom? What? Whom? <sighs> right. Whom do I give it to? And uh, to is a preposition. You don't want to end a sentence with a preposition. <laughs> to whom do I give it? Well, just put it on my desk. You read my article already, sir? What did you think of it? Translated, that's great, into Swedish? English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I understand, sir. No, 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 sir. No, sir, it won't happen again, sir. No. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. Uh, Don, I have a message for you. Wait. Wait one miserable minute. And... The message is, Anne says goodnight. When she left, you were on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, with the hatchet man. I just came that close to getting fired because of her. What'd she do? It's what she didn't do. Shirley always used to clean up my grammar before she sent an article, and Anne let it go the way I gave it to her, making me look like some kind of illiterate dope. Well, why would she do that? Well, I sort of told her to leave my grammar alone, but I didn't mean on a finished copy. You mean she just sent it up to Hamlin? <laughs> no. No, I sent it up. She typed it, and it looked so neat, I didn't bother to check it. Well, that's not really her fault. Now, don't defend her. Don't defend her. She's got to go. She has got to be fired. I agree. Look, I don't care what... <laughs> I agree. I thought you liked her. She's fine. I can't stand you. You've been acting like a maniac since she's been here, so let's fire her. Okay. I think you ought to do it right away, first thing in the morning. Me? You. You. Me. Not me. Well, I wouldn't know what to say to her. I mean, what would I say to her? Are you going to see her tonight? Yeah. Perfect. When you pick her up, ask her what she'd like to do. And? Give her a choice. Would she like to go to dinner, see a show, or look for a new job? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it all looks so delicious. I've never had any of these things before. Well, I wanted you to have something more interesting than the usual sukiyaki. Nothing is duller than the same thing day after day. <laughs> You're so right. I, uh, I was just wondering whether you're beginning to find your job a bit of a drag. No, not a bit. Why do you ask? Oh, well, I, I just wondered. I mean, golly, it's the same nine to five routine day after day after day. So far, it's only been day after day. Tomorrow will be my third day. <laughs> Donald, are you trying to tell me something? What? I mean, do you have some criticism of my work? Well, um... Well, yeah. Yeah, and I do have one slight criticism. You almost got me fired today. Well, how did I do that? You typed up my Bergman article and you sent it in without bothering to correct the grammar. Well, you told me not to. You ordered me not to. I told you not to correct me in the middle of a sentence. That didn't mean never. Well, how was I supposed to know that? By exercising a little intelligence. That's not a very nice thing to say. You're blaming me for your mistake. I am not blaming you for my mistake, Anne. It was your mistake. Donald Hollinger, you are unfair, unjust, and unchivalrous, and I'm certainly glad I found out before getting more involved with you. Look, Anne, you can hate me all you want, but I... I don't hate you, Donald. I think that our relationship has been seriously jeopardized, and I don't think I ever want to see you again. But I certainly don't hate you. What is this? Raw fish. <laughs> You must have been pretty brutal. <laughs> Look, I never had a chance. She fired me. We had a fight and I lost. I lost the fight, lost my girl, lost everything. What 
she doing here? Looks like she's working. I thought you fired her. So did I. Apparently, she doesn't have that impression. What should I do? Fire her. Are you out of your mind? I have to straighten out the personal relationship first. The longer you put it off, the worse it'll be. Jerry, I just can't go out there and say good morning. You're fired. Well, I guess I'll have to do it myself. Now, what? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. But my own way. You buzzed? Yes. Yes, I did, Aunt. Yes, Mr. Hollinger. Oh, so now it's Mr. Hollinger. Yes, Mr. Hollinger. Well, uh, Miss Marie, um, about last night. I beg your pardon, uh, but last night was between Anne and Donald. I really don't think Miss Marie and Mr. Hollinger should be discussing it. <laughs> right. Absolutely right. Take a letter, please. To who it may concern. Uh, th that should be whom. I made it whom. Uh, right, right. I was, I was just testing. Mm. When someone is as crazy about another person as I am about you. These are business hours, and I... Miss Marie, it is your job to take dictation from me. The content of that dictation is my responsibility, not yours. Yes, sir. Uh, read that back to me, please. When someone is as crazy about another person as I am about you. I like the sound of that. Read it again, please. Uh, would you read that back to me, please, Miss Marie? When someone is as crazy about another person as I am about you. Very good. It is impossible to have a business-like relationship. My feelings towards you are intensely personal. And the strain of pretending to be impersonal has shortened my temper, impaired my judgment, jeopardized my career. And most important of all, has estranged me from the person I care for the most, namely the aforesaid you. Will you read that back to me, please? The strain of these past few days has been unbearable for me, too. And for the same reasons you mentioned. My temper and, and disposition have been even worse than yours. Terry Doby's dropping by to meet Donald. Terry's the secretary I told you about that's going to replace me. Great typist, fantastic shorthand, and very, very bright. Yeah, there's probably a catch. An advanced state of ugliness, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the way I pick them for Leon. No. <laughs> Terry happens to be extremely attractive. Fine. Just don't let any of this subversive talk reach Leon's ears, please. <laughs> You know, I'm sure glad you don't feel the way Judy does on that subject. I mean, somehow it just seems so petty. It really is. I mean, I always assumed that men hire their secretaries for their ability, not for their appearance. Oh, this man does. Typing, shorthand, and intelligence. That's what counts with me. I knew that's the way you'd feel. Oh, I'll get that. Hi, Terry. Terry, I want you to meet Donald Hollinger. 